Hi, it's Annie with Sensing Vitality. We're going to be talking with Barbara Ogard, the bat rehab specialist who's been working with bats for almost 40 years. And she's going to show us two extraordinary, beautiful little bats. So let's go check it out. This is your bat house, yes? Yeah, this is my brand new one. And um, over there is the old one that's going to become, um, <laughs> if I get in any white nose syndrome bats. And now I got all my guys sleeping in here. Yes, because right so. this is uh, November in Seattle. It's pretty chilly out. Yeah. It's what, under 48 degrees, they go into pretty good hibernation. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm keeping them about 50 so that I know that they're still alive and comfortable. Yes. Because you know, they go in compromised. Because, uh, you know, people don't bring me healthy back. Yeah. And I've always been a rehabber. And then just one day, someone brought me an injured back and a cat attack, which mm. is common. <laughs> I, I was so impressed by, about the intelligence of this little critter. I, it was very scared of me in the beginning, like I'm gonna be a giant and eat him. But then after he said, hey, she's feeding me. <laughs> the next day he was almost um, placid and just uh, wonderful to work with. And um, it just went on and on until he could be released. and. Uh, I thought, i got to study this animal because it was such a uniqueness in all the mammals that I had rehabbed. That was 1983. I was working for a veterinarian. And there was no nobody working with them once they were injured. So that's how Sabi Wildlife started. Okay, come on in. Great. Let's have to a little bit for you to see the oh, different yeah. kinds of bats that we have. In our state of Washington, we have 14 different species, all insect eaters, and this is just a few of them. But the most common is the big brown bat. Mm -hmm. And that's a bat that loves to be around humans because we generate so much garbage that insects come. Yeah. <laughs> so they like to be in our attics and barns and stuff like that. Yeah. So. And that's the most common, is the big brown? Well, the little brown is the most common, Okay. The small one. And look how much littler that one yeah. is. If you look above the two little brown bats, you see that bat that's missing a wing. That's called the hoary bat. And you could tell it's hoary because it has white tips on its fur and is a moth hunter. It hunts solitary and can go for 24 miles while foraging. I have been interested in how all animals communicate, but bats really communicate a lot. Yes, they do. Echolocation is when they're hunting. Yeah. And they're looking for a meal. Yes. But but then the language over and above it is how they get by in life. Yeah. Because they, they, they like all other animals, communicate with each other and live in big colonies. Not all bats live in colonies, but like the silver hair, that's a loner. Is that right? Bat. It doesn't live with a whole bunch of other bats. And that is really rare because I thought they, the reason, one reason they survive so well is the way they work in community, yeah? Yes, yes. But this bat is pretty unique in the fact that, uh, you know, the, anytime you ever see two silver hairs, it's usually a mom and a pup. And uh, because they only mate once a year, so they don't form a family unit. I say it's kind of a big bat orgy because it's very promiscuous and all the bats come together and they mate. And then the females go into hibernation carrying viable sperm. And they retain that sperm for the six months of hibernation. So when they wake up, all the females are ovulating and pregnant. So now they can form a maternity colony with all the other girls. That's <laughs> so, amazing. Yeah. I was shocked how long they live yeah. for such a small little mammal. Well, they're the uh, longest lived mammal for their body size, between 20 to 40 years. So doesn't that speak like loads for the intelligence that they can survive, Absolutely. right? The, the bat that we know the most about, believe it or not, is the vampire bat. Because a vampire bat lives in a colony. Is that the vampire bat there? No, no. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, I was like, I didn't think so. No, these are all... Uh, these are the state. local. Yeah, you know, because vampire bats are only found in Mexico, Costa Rica, and the top of South America. Nowhere else in the world. Forget uh, Transylvania or any yeah. of those. <laughs> no. Vampire bats, though, in the colony, 
they they really take care of each other. You know, like the vampire bat uh, needs to eat blood every day, and they could starve to death in a day and a half. So if one is sick or can't go out and fly, all of the other ones come home and regurgitate that sick bat. That's amazing. If it's a mom and her pup is hanging, waiting for her, if the mom gets killed, something bad happens, all of the aunts and grandmas come home that, that, yeah. pup, that often. No other bats do that, any of the other pups. Yeah, vampires are, are really amazing. Yeah. But we have none in, in our state. I always want to say that because they ask me at programs, where are the vampires? Did you bring a vampire? No. <laughs> What is that one in the middle there? This one that we... Oh, this is one that um, came from Townsend. And that's what it is. It's um, a Townsend's big ear bat. Oh, it's yeah. I was just looking at the size of those ears. A lot of animals in the Northwest are named Townsend. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, After the scientists. Yeah. Plants and animals. And I've also noticed these little moving things in this. <laughs> is that what you're feeding them? Yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> this is, they're wonderful for um, a, a diet of a captive animal yes, like a bat yeah. because they're a perfect diet and you know usually we keep them in a, a, a medium of um, vitamins added and everything. You know these bats have wicked appetites. Is that right? Yeah, like, like this little bat might eat 15 of the giants. Oh, wow. That's, that's a lot. Yeah, it is. And you mentioned in the beginning, everybody's in hibernation now because it's cold outside. And how long are they going to hibernate for? Six and what's, months. That is amazing. They wake up in April. Talk about that. I mean, how does any animal do that? I mean, I, there <laughs> I aren't very many that do real well, hibernation. You know, bears do it too. That's right. Bears give birth, you know, so they, they do, the body temperature drops to the environment and, uh, but I have two that are um, not in hibernation yeah. because they live in my are they, house. Are they in your house? Yeah. Well, this is Cleopatra. Okay. And she is my educational bat. So I keep her in the house because uh, she just sometimes has and to be seen. How long have you had her? Well, she's eight years old. Oh, she's eight. Yeah. <gasps> right, I've got, oh my goodness. She's looking at it. But I'll wow. show you how she eats because. Um, and does she fly around when? No, and that's uh, the problem, but I'll tell you about that in just one minute. Okay. But she's always really good about it. Oh, she's just amazing. Look how little, and she's the little brown bat or is she a big brown? No, she's a silver. Oh, she's a silver. Yeah. Then I can see that now. Cleo, you want to work? I'm oh, hungry, is what wow. she's saying. Look at that. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Well, her story is that she gets um, one of those sticky tapes that oh, people use in their bonds. Yeah. I can't tell you what those tapes do because yeah. they don't just get insects. They yeah. get the bats, they get the birds. Oh. So we ask people to build a, just oh. a little soft hardware yeah. around the strip. And it still gets all the bugs. Oh, to protect the bats. Yeah. So people say, hey, I never thought about that, but. So that hurt her wings, the strip. Yeah, and when I took her yeah. off, you see this wing is. Oh my gosh. This wing is a double membrane. Yeah. Out of the membrane came off, so. But she's um, happy in captivity now. <laughs> so you've had her for yeah, a long eight time? Years, eight yeah, eight years. A wonderful little bat. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that's clear bat. Does she hang upside down too and everything? Oh I mean, yes. Oh yeah. In fact, she sleeps on her back. And that's an unusual thing for bat. But you see, with bats, they have a, a different anatomy. And the one thing that's really important to know about bats is that, um, uh, that they actually are comfortable hanging upside down. And their body is built to hang upside yeah, down. Yeah, this is something I'm very interested in. Yeah, and the legs, uh, they, at the hips, the, the whole leg yeah. goes backwards. Right. So the feet point back. Yeah. And the face goes this way. Yes. But now the feet point back, that means they can hang like this with the whole body upside down and the back. Now that means that when the, the back wants to take a flight, he can just drop down and fly away get pushed off by those knees 
because when you look at him, you can see his kneecaps on the outside. Yeah, it's pretty unique. <laughs> like, why do not other birds hang upside down? I mean, just, yeah. I and mean, they're not a bird, but, you know, flying creatures. Well, to... they, they say that one of the reasons is that this means this bat can go anywhere and hang. Yeah. Like the top of the branches are taken by birds, True. so that wouldn't be a good place. So they're underneath the it's branch and sa space a lot of room under there. So, so it's a, a good uh, safety thing for them to hang upside down. And some of them look like leaves. Oh, yeah. It's an interesting are. adaption. I know for humans, if we're upside down too long, it's too difficult on our well, bodies. Well, the blood rushes yeah. to our head, but they have valves that go the opposite way of us. So that means yeah. hanging upside down is their preference. So when people call me with a ninja bat, I always ask them to hang a piece of t-shirt material over the side so that can get into the back of it for security and comfort. Yeah, I can see that this in bat is upside down. in the back of that. Yeah, between there, yeah. Yeah, that is really good to know. Well, I have one more bat. Okay. But this is not my bat toe. Okay. It's usually my educational bat. But this morning I looked at Roberto and he's sound asleep. Okay. So I didn't want to wake him up. So. so, But this is the same kind of bat. So, This is a big brown. And uh, Roberto is a, a big brown. Okay, sweetie. You want a big one? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, I woke him up. <laughs> yeah, that's listen to that it. sound he made. Yeah, that's one of his languages. That was all swears. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sweet. Okay, oh, stop. my. Oh, he's mad, though. Okay, oh. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, he's... He, that's oh, why I don't use him as yeah. an educational bat, because he's not happy. Yeah, well, he's probably thinking it's time to hibernate, huh? Well, actually, yeah, or, this one I keep in the house, because he will not eat on his own. And I've had him for seven years. Oh, my. And he waits for me every night. Oh. So I have, I have a few I actually have to hand feed. And he can't fly either? No, and um, he's been injured in some kind of a, a mm. fight. Oh, yeah, like Part a, with a cat. Part of his gone, and yeah. Mm. And somebody just found him uh, hanging from a fence. So. Everybody's got a story. Everybody's got a story. <laughs> yeah. One thing I'd like you to note is how clean this bat is. Yeah. All the grooming bats, is interesting, right? Yeah, they spend 30% of their waking time grooming. 30%? Yeah, so yeah, most yeah. of them are really shiny. When I get a bat in that has a real dull coat, yeah. okay, then I suspect rabies. Oh. This is one of the signs. The signs, yeah. if they have a dull coat. Well, they don't, they don't groom. Yeah. So, <laughs> but this guy, I mean, you can see he keeps himself very clean, and, um, and they, they comb with their back feet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. And they, their mouths too, right? I've seen their lick and oh yeah, they lick and a lot. yeah. And you know, one thing you're talking about licking is that when they get a drink of water, they actually lap like, like a dog cat. or a cat. Uh, yeah, yeah, a, a dog. Yeah. So people find that kind of strange, but they they get right on their dish and they lap up their water. Which animal do you think is closest to the bat in the mammals? Supposedly, they're somewhat related to shrews in the chain of the tree. But they're more related to us than they are to rats. But a lot well, of people think, you know, that yeah. they look like flying rats. No, they're, they're, they're not in that family at all. Rats are rodents, yeah. and bats are chiropterous. So they're in a, a class, a of, their class own. of their own. So. Are you still mad? Are you still mad? Oh. Are you still mad? Okay. oh. Can and how well it? do they see in the day with their eyes? I know they can see. Perfect eyesight. Perfect eyesight. Yeah. Um, as blind as a bat came when nobody knew anything about bats. But our bats have better eyesight than we do. And you know, it's funny because everybody thinks that bats always use echolocation, you know, get dinner. But a lot of times, like uh, so we have bats that come out earlier, 
than other bats. So the little bats, they come out like maybe when it's still dusky out and they don't use echolocation then because they use their eyesight to catch. So, you know. So, so their eyes are, our sight is better than ours. Yes. Wow, I did so not know that. So a bat is a myth. Yeah, wow. Of all things around bats, what is it that you love the most, do you think? I think of their intelligence because yeah. I ask this bat, once it's injured and it comes to me, I'm asking it to eat those worms. Now remember this bat has been eating night flying insects with wings. Yes. So they're, they're looking at the worms and saying, well, I don't think I want to eat those. Yeah, so, that's not my so food. <laughs> I decapitate them. And then they get a taste of them and they say, oh boy, these are yeah. really good. Yeah. By morning, the dish is clean. So that's okay. intelligence because yeah. that's saying, I'll do anything to survive. But then once they get on these mealworms, they don't want anything else. So anyway, that, that was a surprise to me how fast they can learn. And any other things that you love about bats that stand out from other mammals you've worked with? Because you've worked with so many mammals in your life. Yeah, well, you know, with bats, um, I, I don't know, they, there's just something mystical about them. Uh, they, magical is a better word. They just um, are very gentle. They have a, a, another life, and the more you study them, the more you learn, and it keeps learning. And I yeah. just can hardly believe, uh, you know, even today, some of the things that Dr. Tuttle said. And it's just unbelievable how all these bats find a way to survive. So, you know, I, I'm saying, do you know any other animal that eats all the insects that like to bite you? Yeah. And then produces iguana for you to grow a new guy. And then they produce all these jobs for people because uh, the jobs are like in the caves in uh, India and uh, in all these foreign countries that, um, like the Buddhists, they protect the caves where the bats are. So, I mean, how wonderful is oh, that? That is pretty amazing. Yeah. And I would tell you one more thing. People always ask me, how can they encourage bats to come to their bat house? And my recommendation is they, those bats do what they want to do. And so if it's getting really bad with construction, you know, they might find that box. But I recommend that you plant night blooming flowers. And so actually the and pollinator of uh, those flowers are uh, moss, moss, beetles, and flies. And that's a bat's diet. So, and your yard smells so wonderful in the summer that you really want to get out there and enjoy the... And which kinds of flowers do you know any okay. on the top of your head? Well, first of all, honeysuckle. And honeysuckle throws its uh, fragrance out, even though it smells wonderful during the day if yeah. you sniff it. But at night is when it throws that, okay. that smell out. Yeah. And then when you walk, it's in the air. Evening primrose, four o'clock, moonflower, coneflower, just... tobacco, uh, what, salvia. Uh, am I saying that right? Salvia. salvia? But there's a lot. Now, and of course, the number one is jasmine. But if you want your yard to smell beautiful and encourage the bats to come, then you put these Beautiful. Out. Yeah. I'll definitely put that out. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for joining me and Barbara. And you can help the bats by planting those plants or putting up a bat house near you. And there's also some great organizations to donate to if you can do that. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for being a Patreon supporter. Thanks for watching this YouTube channel. See you next time.